Hi there. My name's Richard Griffiths and I'm Professor of International Studies at Leiden University here in the Netherlands. And I'm going to be your tutor and your guide as together we configure the world. To configure the world implies arranging or adapting our view of the world. And for that we need information, we need data and of course we need some idea of what we're going to do with it. Our methodology will be eclectic. We will borrow concepts and theories whenever and from wherever we need. We will explore the forces that shape the world we live in today, like trust, wealth and power. We'll examine the interrelationship between politics, society and economics. And the focus on this interrelationship is known as political economy. And political economy is the discipline we will adopt throughout this course. We will not choose sides, but you may. Free marketeers can stay free marketeers and Marxists can stay Marxists.
Now, what they did was to plunder a database of 37 million worldwide companies and investors. Yep, these things do exist, and it's called the Orbis database. And from this, they extracted information on 43,000 multinational corporations. They then looked at the patterns of ownership among them and covered over 1 million ownership ties. They then linked this to size in terms of operating revenue and calculated a network of control. Control, as we've seen, over a sizable chunk of world trade and production. They managed to isolate a core group of 737 companies that controlled 80% of the revenues of the network. And within that group, they located a core of 147 corporations that controlled 40% of the network and that was almost entirely exclusively controlled and owned within itself. This degree of concentration far exceeds the concentrations in income and wealth that have captured the headline in the debate on Thomas Piketty's capital in the 21st century. We can be even more specific about the composition of this elite. Within the top 50, only five did not come from the banking and financial sectors. Unchecked media concentration over several decades has allowed an increasingly small number of powerful media owners to accumulate vast amounts of revenue and influence. This has placed great political power in few hands, giving them control over public debate, including which issues are addressed and which information is available to the public. In place of a range of viewpoints reflecting a diverse public, reporting is frequently dominated by the politicised positions of private interest. The media is often used as a platform for attack and misrepresentation, as prominent voices objectify women, deny climate change, vilify immigrants and the unemployed, and support government austerity. The culture of mutual interests between politicians and those in control of the media distorts our democracy in two ways. Firstly, by giving media proprietors lobbying power to influence government policy. And secondly, by favouritism granted to politicians by their close friends in the media, obstructing genuine attempts to inform the public. Meanwhile, a climate of insecurity has been created for journalists working to hold those in power to account. Journalists and editors involved in the publication of leaked evidence of mass surveillance by the UK and US governments have been threatened with criminal prosecution for reporting on these issues of vital public interest. We need a free and open press capable of informing citizens about issues of public interest. We need a diverse media to ensure free and fair debate and representation. It's time to reclaim the media for the many, not the few. We call for an EU directive that would implement the following. Legislation to avoid concentration of media ownership in advertising and the media. Guaranteed independence of supervisory bodies from political power and influence, preventing the abuse of media power for special interest. Rules enforcing transparency to identify beneficial owners of media outlets. Reclaim your media industry from unaccountable private power. Sign the petition for a more open and diverse media industry.
My name is Emanuela, and I'm Rock Ready to Clan. And this is a show you've been waiting for The Ugly Tooth Show. I'm your host, Emanuel Roba. Our topic today is. My name is Yue Zhao. Um, I'm a professor and a Canada research chair at the School of Communication at Simon Fraser University. And uh, the field I'm in is called a Political Economy of Global Communication, which basically look at uh, global power structures and its interaction with the media. So on the one hand, how the media uh, is shaped by global political economic forces, and on the other hand, how uh, media itself um, have an impact on the evolving global system. Given the increasingly important role of media in uh, both national and global affairs, I believe knowledge about the media, both in terms of its structure, that is, how it is organized, uh, which media outlet is considered as significant in a given country, that kind of thing, and also the content, uh, both very important in um, the current conduct of foreign policy, in uh, government regulation decisions, and also just um, in um, everyday knowledge by the public, because the public, in the end, does play a role in deciding um, the directions of society. Social scientists often create the data that they need and then feed it into sophisticated statistical models. So the first task of critical political economy is to get behind the nature of this data. We're not denying 
that the data has some reflection on reality. It's just not of the quality for the uses to which it's put. Once we get that criticism out of the way, then we can really start getting critical. And that is what this course is all about.